Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. We've got some good news coming up in the UK from March the 29th. We'll be allowed out racing again, outdoors only. The indoor racing will have to wait, but it seems to me a good time to get the cars out of the cupboard and get them ready to go back to the track. So I've got my two fronty chassis here. I've got the original X-Ray T4F19 version here on the left with the classic motor in front of the front axle and the X-Ray T4F21 here on the right with the motor in the middle of the car. And also here the new option part from X-Ray, the heavyweight bumper with a 170 gram brass weight here and a recut bumper to make it fit better. That would replace the current 30 gram brass weight that comes in the front bumper of the T4F21 as standard. So what I plan to do in this video is just to get these two cars ready with a battery and tyres and the body so they're at racing weight. Take a look at the weight distribution on the corner scales, compare the 19 to the original 21 and then we'll fit the heavyweight bumper to the 21 and see what difference that makes and see how close it brings it to the 19. Okay so here we have the 2019 car with the front motor ready to race more or less. I'll just mention a few things about the, the weight on this car so it's not completely out of the box. There is some ballast already in front of the speed controller and in front of the servo. There's about 10 grams here and about 55 grams here. Um, we'll just add the body shell now so we get it up properly to race weight. So we've got a total running weight in this spec of 1282 grams, which is slightly over the 1250 minimum. I would just ignore the, the cross weights here. Um, I'm not really concerned about setting those in this particular video. What I'm most interested in is the front to rear weight distribution. And as you can see at this 1280 grams weight, this car, the 19 car, 68% of the weight is over the front axle and 32% is over the rear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compare this to the 21 car and see what that has with its standard mid-motor configuration. And now we'll do the same with the 2021 car. Again, I've just got it on the scales now without the body shell on, just to point out where I've got some ballast already. Uh, there's 10 grams extra just directly on top of the standard bumper weight. There's around about 20 grams in front of the servo and also 20 or 25 grams in front of the battery on this side. Um, again, I won't go into the corner weighting now. Um, I can do that in another video if people are interested. Do leave a message in the comments if you would like to see a longer video on using the corner weighting. What I'll do now is I'll pop on the body shell and we'll try and do as close as we can as a like-for-like like test. Just so you know, it's the same battery pack and same tyres in both cars, but they do have different motors and different speed controllers, so they're not set up exactly identical to each other. Okay, and again, the same body shell going on to the car. Um, this one actually is right on the 1250 limits. There's some other difference in weight between the two cars. I think that one probably needs a little bit more ballast just to be safe. Um, and looking at the... Weight distribution, front to rear, which is the thing I'm most interested in, the difference is quite dramatic. The uh, 21 car has only got 60% of its weight over the front axle. Compare that to 68% with the old front motored car, uh, and of course 40% therefore over the rear axle. Um, so what would be interesting to do now is uh, spend a little bit of time with the wrenches, get the heavy 170 gram ballast weight onto this car, and see what effect that has. And finally, the 2021 car with the heavy bumper weight. Now, I haven't switched the scales on yet, so we'll see what figures we get at the end. I just wanted to go a quick run through of the car with that heavier weight on it. I've taken away that 55 grams of ballast that I had stuck around here. Um, but here's the new weight at the front. Um, nicely finished by X-Ray with the mark of the weight there, um, all black coated brass. Uh, it's not a cheap part, but considering the amount of brass you get in there by X-Ray standards, it's actually very good value. And um, one thing that I noticed as well, the new bumper that they provided is actually of a much denser material, which I think is a very good idea because there's there's less foam. So hopefully that will help to protect you in crashes. And uh, flipping it over to the underside, you can see that the weight is a very, very nice flush fit against the standard plastic bumper. And again, a very nice fit around the modified foam bumper. So very pleased with the quality of that overall. But the most important thing, of course, is going to be the actual change in performance. And to get an idea about that, let's put it on the scales. I'll get the body shell ready, power up the scales, and wait for the moment of truth. Uh, 
and there we have it with the heavy weight in the front bumper the weight distribution has changed quite a lot we're now up to 66 percent over the front axle and 34 over the rear which compares a lot more closely with the weight distribution on the 2019 car with the motor over the front axle anyway which was 68 percent but as i suspected the overall weight of the car has gone up by around about 90 grams so even though i took out all that ballast because the brass bumper weight is so heavy there was no way i was going to be able to counteract that so now we're running a car that's 90 grams overweight overall so the proof is really going to be in running the car I should be out on the track within the next couple of weeks to be able to report back about how it handles and see what kind of difference it makes. And most importantly of all, see if it makes the car any quicker. So if you have any other questions about the cars or about this particular setup or, or anything else you want to ask, uh, then do please ask them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.